I'm Roger. And I'm Adam. And welcome to a special edition version of RC Street Stop's Product of the Week. What's so special about it? I'm wearing long sleeves! <laughs> so what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about the Axel SCX-10 with the Ram Power Wagon body on it. This is a favorite truck of mine in the store. Yeah, you've been drooling over this one for a while, but even more interesting, this is the first time we are actually talking about rock crawlers right. on, on the uh, product that we Right, made. this is the first rock crawler we featured. We were kind of talking back and forth, going, well, haven't we done yet? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, rock crawlers. So for those who don't know, you know, you got, you, you got your typical bashers, you know, like your short course trucks and your monster trucks and stuff like that. You got your street cars, people right. like to drift with those. Right. And then there's a whole other, you know, buggies for racing. Right. Uh, rock crawling is a whole different kind of hobby out there. Right. It's a whole it? different facet to the hobby. Absolutely. So what's different about rock crawling? Well, crawling the object is not to go as fast as you can from point A to point B. It's uh, crawling is about like kind of you versus nature in a way. Yeah. Um, you I, versus the environment. Right. And the, and the terrain. Exactly. And I've always found that crawling is one of those things that's best done outdoors and in nature. Like I crawling tracks are fun, but one. One thing with crawling, once you master something, mm -hmm. then you know how to go over it again. So yeah. there's a pile of rocks and you've gone over it, and then the, the challenge is getting over that pile of rocks. Yeah. Once you've done that, and it takes a lot of skill, then you're like, eh, I've already conquered this, and you move on to something else. So there's a lot of, like, you can go out to lots of different parks and tide pools, lots of cool places to go rock crawling. And this rock crawling is one of those things where it really is... Uh, with a lot of RC cars, you're by yourself. It's mm -hmm. not as much fun as, as it may seem. It's just yeah. you're driving a car up and down the street or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And with crawling, it's one of those things that's super fun even if you're alone. It's always more fun if someone else is with you. Yeah. But with crawling, it's always like you against nature. You go out someplace, go on a trail, crawl over it. You're always trying to find the right way up and over something and so it's on. It's about it's, mapping and using right. the torque and power of the vehicle to right. get over the course as opposed to how fast you're going to get there. And uh, you've talked about how, you know, you'd like to be able to just keep your rock crawler in the trunk of your car when you're at, you know, you end up at the beach or at the park. Right. You know, you can just pull it out and be like, oh, I'm going to climb over this stuff here. And um, It's definitely got a huge following. It's it nowhere near as popular as racing, but they're... The people who are really into the uh, rock crawling are really into it. Right. Um, so, yeah, let's take a look. So, so these are built very differently <clears throat> right. from regular street right. Rock crawling is one of those things where car or the vehicles used for rock crawling are very specific for rock crawling. Uh, if you look at some of the other facets of the hobby, like short course and drift cars and things like that, mm -hmm. you can pretty much do everything with them. If yeah. you buy a slash, you can take it out to the track, you can drive it around on the street, yep. you can jump it over your neighbor's house. Yeah. You can do all these different things with it, whereas crawlers really can't do that. They're, the top speed of a good running crawler is like a slow jog. Yeah. It's not fast enough to jump. It's not fast enough to go around a track. You'll be asleep by the time it hits the first quarter. <laughs> yeah. uh, what they're extremely good at is crawling, and there's different facets of crawling. Comp crawlers are basically designed to crawl for maximum crawling. It's about going defying physics as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Maximum articulation, minimum weight. I mean, Matt, wait, I mean, it's, it's just all a, out 100% A vehicle engineered from the ground up to go over crazy rock obstacles right. and nothing else. Then there's kind of the middle of the road stuff, and then there's what they refer to as scale crawling. And yeah. scale crawling is where uh, I enjoy most and what the SCX-10 falls into. What scale yeah. stuff is meant to be is scale stuff is meant to mimic the real thing as much as possible. Yeah. So this truck, as you look at it, it's got frame rails like a real truck. It's got solid axles front rail like a real truck. Tire size... Uh, articulation, all that stuff, all the engineering that goes into one of these is kind of to make it yeah. act exactly like a real truck was. A real truck can't go up over a straight up a wall, yep. whereas some comp crawlers come pretty close to that. Yeah, yeah. And I think that with comp crawling, you there's not as much skill involved. Something that will crawl over pretty much anything doesn't require a ton of driving skill, whereas yeah. scale crawling, you've got a lot of limitations built into the vehicle to make it scale. So it takes a bit more skill to go over something that you can just go straight over with a rock crawl or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, other facets of crawling, there's different tire sizes. Uh, there's 2.2, those are the big ones. 1.9, 1.5, those are the 1.9, 1.5 are kind of the scale sizes. But I like the way 2.2s look, so. Yeah, they look cooler. They're they do. Down. Yeah. But this is a 1.9 scale crawler. And uh, one of the things we were mentioning off camera was Adam was talking about it's important where you put the weight in the crawler. That's very true. Mm -hmm. You want to put as much weight forward as you can to keep the truck from coming back over when you're going up. So the more weight you have in the yeah. front, 
the steeper the incline you can go. So you put weights in the wheels, you mount the battery up front, you do everything you can to shift weight forward. And one of the neat things about this is we were looking at some of the other SCX-10s, yeah. and some of the other SCX-10s have the battery mounted in the rear. For whatever reason, this power wagon has it mounted in the front. Yes, yeah, so this so one has it here in the back side. Might be hard to see there in the video, but it's reversed from this. And this we just got in recently, right? Yeah, this has probably been in for a few months. This is the latest version of the SCX-10 yeah. we've gotten in. And uh, what Axo tends to do is they just kind of tend to tweak the chassis a little bit here and there. Okay. Uh, as, the, as the SCX-10 evolves. So if you go back, way back to the Dingo, which was the first one, that has three-link front and rear. It's got a shorter wheelbase. Um, the, everything else is pretty much the same. But then as they move on, they added a four-link in the rear, and some of the G6 uh, uh, trucks have a four-link in the front, and basically four-link just means more articulation. And what a four-link is is you've got four separate links in the suspension as opposed to three. So if you look at this underneath here, you've got... One, two, three, four separate links. And those two links mount right here. Okay. A three link means you've got two from here and a single mount in the front. And then, so one, two, three separate links. So with the four link in the back gives you more articulation, smoother movement. So you want to ideally have a four link front and rear, but the rear is the most important part, which is nice that they put a four link in the rear of this. So you're a big fan of the big giant monster truck style, obviously. I do. I like this body a and, lot. Uh, so there are different kit, there's kit versions of these, there's uh, obviously this is the ready to run version, right? Um, and there are different body styles. That's the other nice thing about the Axial uh, Rock Crawlers is there's right. a really good aftermarket support There is for their chassis. And one thing that uh, I forgot to mention is the SDX-10 is a very, very good truck out of the box. Mm. We I haven't owned one personally, I've had Tamiya Crawlers in the past, which kind of bums me out because the SDX-10 is really probably the most popular mm -hmm. uh, crawling vehicle out there. And um, from what we've been told by customers, this is a very, very good platform out of the box. It requires minimal modifications mm -hmm. to become just absolutely bulletproof and super reliable. Okay. And that's important. I mean, it means you can buy one of these, take it out of the box, take it crawling, and not have to worry about breaking a link or breaking an axle or breaking a drive shaft or on the trail. Yeah. Because rock crawling is extremely hard on driveline parts. Okay. Most people look at them and go, well, how can it be that hard on things? You're, you're just crawling along. But, yeah. I mean, electric motors have so much torque. And then the gear reduction in these is so high that there's so much torque uh, in these that if you stick a tire in a rock and you give it a bunch of throttle, you've got a ton of torque pushing against that tire trying to get it to move. And something's eventually going to give you is it's going to throttle the hole mm -hmm. or you're going to snap a drive shaft. Oh. And this is a very, very durable truck out of the box. All right. And that's one of the nice things is uh, with rock cars, they go forever on a battery. Yes. This will probably go a half an hour, 45 minutes on a 3300. You, get, you, get, you don't want to go out and get ready for three hours of crawling and then get 15 minutes into it because your axle broke because you're yeah. trying to crawl over something. But enough about crawling in general. Let's talk a little bit more about the truck. Yeah. Um, so this is the SF10 Ram Power Wagon. What else comes in there? Uh, the truck is pretty complete. Uh, it does not have a battery and a charger like most of the axial stuff. Uh, and you can run nickel metal hydrides or lipos on this. Uh, like we mentioned before, this has a forward mounted battery, which is really cool. Also, the body on this truck is super cool. The bed and the uh, cab are separate. They're held together by a set of screws. Oh, so you can take that off. And, and yeah, oh, totally. Okay. Right. And then uh, the old honcho, which was one of the first trucks that mm -hmm. they made on the SDX platform. Yeah. They used to make a utility bed for the honcho. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, so you can use the utility bed on the back of this, and that's essentially just a flat bed with a roll bar on and it. And then you can put like your little scale accessories. Right, you can mount your yeah. scale axle and your scale jack. It's all about the details. Exactly. That's, that's really, like in this hobby, it's all about how lifelike you can make it look. Yeah. Your, your scale, uh, your scale igloo. Yep, you scale igloo. You scale Roger barbecue. Will play, Roger will play a game, he'll be like, come here, is this real or is this a rock crawler? And there are times when you look at these photos, you can't tell. Right. And that's one of the neat things, too, with crawling. It's one of the few facets remaining in the hobby where there are a lot of truly skilled craftsmen building stuff. Okay. A lot of the guys who do crawling, they scratch build bodies, they scratch build chassis. I mean, you don't see that anymore with, like, short course trucks and all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, it used to be back in the day, you would buy a car as a kit, and then you'd assemble it, and you'd modify it until your heart was content. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the hobby was building yeah. stuff figuring out what makes it tick, and crawling is one of the last facets of the hobby where there are really a lot of die-hard guys who are true craftsmen, they're truly skilled at what they do, and it's, it's a lot, it's really cool to see that, that part of the hobby still alive. 
All right, so no battery or charger. People are going to have to buy those separately. It does come with the controller. Comes with the X3 controller. Uh, all the electronics are built in, all of that. So mm -hmm. that's otherwise ready to go. If folks want to check out a rock crawler, where can they do that? RC Street Shop, 5521 East Spring Street, Long Beach, California. And uh, if they, they, you know, say they live on the other side of the country and they're shoveling snow right now, and, and <laughs> you know, they, they wish they were here in sunny California, but can't be, can they call us and ask us questions? They sure can. 562-425-9000. And if you're too shy to talk words into a phone, we do the social media thing, so you can hide behind your keyboard if you prefer. Hit us up on Twitter. We are RC Street Shop, all one word. Uh, we're also on Facebook, RC Street Shop there as well, like the page if that's your thing. And uh, we got the YouTube channel. Obviously, we've been doing product of the week videos. We're thinking uh, we're going to be expanding and pretty soon do more how-to mm -hmm. videos. Maybe right. that'll be on the Wednesday uh, in product of the week videos one on Friday. So, you know, we would appreciate it if you like the video. And be sure to subscribe. subscribe. Come on, subscribe. If you're enjoying the content, spread the word. Let people know. And uh, you know, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of the video. Let us know what other videos you'd like to see. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye.